Hey guys, it's actually Easter Sunday and I'm in my shop. Let me get this light right. I've got a couple of necks uh, roughed out with uh, the dowels in them. Got a little bit of sand to do on them, but two uh, necks here, meaning two fingerboards, zebra wood, and a dark one. And you see there's a coffee can here. Now, I think some of you are getting tired of the coffee can guitar videos. Some of you aren't. Um, guess what? For you, those of you that aren't, in an upcoming episode, I'm going to show you how to make these. This lets you set uh, a can up real easy by marking where the cuts go. And this shows you where your holes go through for the neck. But anyway, let's set this aside because we're finally back on a cigar box guitar. Are you happy? And look at that. My favorite box, a Camacho 60 by 6. Nice and thick. But guess what? We're not going to use this one. In fact, I'm going to use something I've never used before. Something that a lot of you use to one extent or another. Look at this puppy. This is a very old white owl box, and I'm going to make a guitar out of this. Now, I've got a charity event that I'm donating this to, and the idea is, is I think I'll use this neck here, and I'm going to make this vintage. I think um, the people in this charity that I'm, I'm making this for have a golf term. I think they like to smoke cigars, so I'm going to line this with... Um, cigar bands um, but the rest of it's going to stay uh, pretty plain and look pretty vintage because this box looks vintage now since I've never done this before and I've always done the Camacho boxes there are some things I'm going to learn along the way and I'm going to let you join me to watch me make some mistakes so let's get started hey check out that graphic isn't that cool Okay, guys, let me grab a pointer here. I got things turned around, and I want to show you that um, I did an episode called Don't Blow Your Top, and I had a, it was my very first guitar, and I learned in that lesson that um, I need at least the, the, the fretboard or fingerboard uh, height above the top of the box, which means that we got to route this down. Um, so I would make a cut here and a cut here. This is my bridge line here. Um, but anyway, I, I need to figure out how uh, thick the lid is. And then I want to do just a little bit more to give myself plenty of height because I always use these uh, floating bridges with thumb screws. And so I need to get this down enough. But the first thing I noticed about my box here was that when you open it, it's not like the Camacho box where the whole thing opens like so. This one has an offset here. Now, I'm going to build this like I usually do where the top basically opens and takes the neck with it or the neck comes off with it. But So what I need to do here is I need to find out how thick the top of this lid is and I've already set that with that so it's like this so I'm going to take this down just a, a millimeter more or two uh, up past here when I route this out but if you notice here I really don't want to notch this and have this weird looking notch because the neck isn't going to cover the front and back so what I'm actually going to have to do is come down this far on the box right here and I'm gonna leave this part of the box up here and start making my cut down here so I'll mark this there's my center point so I'll make my cut for the neck to slip through this way and leave this part of the box here and it'll stay clean so let's see how that works out once I get my pockets cut for my neck and glue the second board on and dowel it uh, to make the neck strong, then I got to figure out how I'm going to reinforce 
the insides of this box and put pillars in the corner to tie everything together. I also have to make a decision about whether I want to flip the lid over and use this or stick with this. And I'm thinking I'm going to stick with this. This is a pretty cool to me because this comes from a time when the common man really couldn't afford a cigar. A cigar was a luxury, so I may just stick with this. Okay, I've taped off both ends of the box and you can see the neck here. I've made a mark here in the middle and I've measured the neck is 38 millimeters wide, 19 millimeters is the center. I've marked here and here where um, the width of the neck and then I've taken and put a mark right here using this and come all the way across to intersect with these lines and I will actually have to start my cut of the pocket down below that far. Okay so now this distance here is the same distance as I need to come down uh, from the top of the box or the side of the box to start making my cut. So I've measured where the end of the box is going to be on my neck. This will be the tail piece. I'll have the tail piece coming out with my typical um, tension pins and grounding apparatus. But anyway, I'm just going to run this down like this now and mark off where I have to route out the pocket for the neck. I'm going to make a cut here with my trusty flat. Uh, find saw and come down to that mark right there. Good. And do the same thing up here. And then I'll just get that nice and straight. Make sure we're not too far down. Good. Now I'm going to figure out uh, how long I need uh, where everything's going to line up so I can put that other board here and glue it down and dowel it to make this strong before I route this out. I don't want to route this out unless this, this is thick enough. Of course, as I've told you before, I never want to put my fingerboard on before I route because then I've got this wobbly teeter-totter thing going on and I don't want that. So I will cut the board that's going to come across the bottom here to strengthen this up. Okay, I've found a piece of another piece of tulip poplar and I've lined up the ends here on the neck that's already cut and I'm going to slide this up away so you can see what I'm doing here. Anyway, what I want to do is I really don't want the second board here to be right under the 12th fret. In fact, most of the fret work, the, the high pitch slide work is down here in the 12th fret. I made a couple little marks right there if you can see them um, that tells me that's the 12th fret so I've got my marks lined up where my neck is going to be and where my bridge is going to be down there so I'm going to line these up and then I'm going to count off to the 12th fret and I'm going to go 13, 14, 15 and then the 16th fret that's where I'm going to want my neck and to bevel like this the sample here so I've marked this off here like so and I'm going to line up these two boards again and I'm going to make a mark right there on this one and again this is the board that will be underneath and we will make a mark there and there and I'll do this on all sides let's make that mark go all the way across like so so I can make that angle like this on my chop saw all right there we go I've got a little bit of belt sanding to do here but I'm just going to flip this over line up the ends like so and then once this is worked over on the belt sander then I'm going to glue this on and I'm going to dowel it like I typically do right in here and strengthen that up and then we'll be ready once it's glued to go out and route this out for the box lid. 
Okay, I've lined up the ends and clamped this together. Um, and what I'm doing right now, as you can see, I've marked out the pilot holes right here. So I'm going to hold the ends together, make sure I'm right on the mark. I'm going to do a triangle pattern, and I'm going to go down and drill through and get my pilot holes on each of these three marks. Okay, now I've put on the bit that matches the size of my dowel, and I am going to drill out each one of these all the way down through the neck. All right, there we go. I'm going to touch up that a little bit. This is going to be underneath the fingerboard, so we don't need to worry about that too much. But one of the things I want to show you is I'm going to want to do some contrast here when I put these in. I want them to stand out because the bottom is going to be visible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these dowels, three of them, and put about this much uh, in black cherry stain and let it soak and then dry. So when I drive these in, I'm going to take these all the way through once they're glued up, drive them all the way in like that, and that stain will show through and give me a nice contrast and give it a little rustic look. But again, I want to make sure that all of this is cleaned up good um, so I don't have to do too much sanding afterwards, which would take away the effect of the stain. Anyway, I'll do that and show you how it looks. All right. We have put the dowels in here, and all I'm really interested in is that the end of them picks up some stain like so. Let these dry out just a little bit, and then we're going to glue this up and make sure that when we glue everything that these are level with this. I've touched this up on the sander and it looks pretty good, but yeah, it gives you kind of a contrast. We're putting a little bit of tight bond on here, and uh, see this old beer can here is pretty handy with a, a piece of a... Uh, wooden dowel on here so I can line this up and then once I get my glue spread of course I got a mark up here where the end of the neck is but I can just pivot this like so and drop this down and now I can make sure that everything's okay here Squirt some glue down in the hole like that. And this is, remember, I want to be really careful about this one because this is where I'm going to use these ones that are stained. And if I cut them off, I'll lose the effect. And let that glue drop down in there like so. And then we're just going to wiggle this back and forth and put that right there nice and even. If I go too far, that's okay, because I've cut them off from below a little bit, and I can just pop it back up and do that. Anyway, I'm going to do this with all three again. See how that looks one more time. If something happens where it's not right, it goes in too far. You just level it off like that. And then finally I can take the pin that I used to set everything out. See the difference? No stain, stain. And I can just drop that one in just like so. Perfect. All right, now for the part that kills <laughs> Our builds being time efficient, glue drying. All right, guys, I have glued up the neck and done a little rough sanding on it, and it's about ready to take to the um, router. Uh, but before I do that, I want to show you a little trick. Um, it's time to cut the pocket in the lid for the neck to go through. You see that? I did that one there. Now let me show you how I did it because this is kind of tricky. Here's a little trick. Once your neck is done, 
if you take a couple pieces of this painter's tape and patch them together like so very close like that and then stick them on the back of the neck like this and then trim it with the scissors you can pull this off and it's the exact size you need to cut out the pocket for the neck so you would just put it on here like so like I did this one now what we're going to do is we're going to drill four holes one two three four right here very carefully now this wood's really brittle and you want to avoid putting tape on any of this as much as possible because sometimes it'll peel it off but uh, let's drill four holes in here and I'll show you the next step all right there we go four holes now I can see where I cut my lines with previously there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this razor knife and I'm going to make a, a cut like so and then come over here and just score this like this and come up where I need to be right there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully take this razor knife and cut the holes out by working this back and forth like so. Now you want to be really careful because if you push on this too hard you're going to end up knocking a hole in this box and it's going to be worthless. All right now once that center is gone I can take my straight edge get the long one and I can see the mark where I've cut right there and I just want to carefully just score this line like so and cut this nice and easy like so once that's open this cuts pretty simple and you just want to be real slow about this and you just go all four sides like this until you get fairly close okay guys let's cheat a little bit remember this this little belt sander with the wheel on it this thing comes in really handy for this. So I've got my mark there, there, and there. And rather than trying to chip away at this with a razor knife, I'm cheating a little bit. So I can just turn this on and go like so and work it nice and slow and check it for when the neck will go through. But let's do that. Alright, that belt sander comes in handy, and then we just use a set of different styles, smooth everything off, get the corners right like so. See there's a little nail right there, an original nail coming up from the bottom. Anyway, I'm just going to keep working this until my neck fits in there like so. Now. Um, I've got a little bit of work, work to do on this back pocket, I think, just a tad. See there. Um, but once I get that done, I am going to varnish this box now because short of uh, drilling a hole in here for my um, uh, input jack and a volume controller, I'm, I'm going to put that. I want to protect what's left of this box. So I'm going to put a couple good coats of varnish on it. Okay, we're going to get a couple coats of clear on this thing to make sure whatever is left on the box stays there. All right, we've got the router table adjusted. And then I'm going to work this all the way down here. That's the line for my bridge. That's what that line is. But you can see the router table is adjusted. And of course, I got this unplugged while I'm doing all this, but... Um, Let's get a look and see where it's nice and flat. There we go. Perfect. All right, there we go. You can see the router blade has done its job. All right, I just took a little file and um, first I took this to the belt sander and knocked everything down. And I take the big file like this, make sure that the corners are rounded off a little bit like so. 
where the router was. Do that a little bit like this. And then I put that clear varnish on there. We just slip it through like so. And you see it seats down. The top of the box has disappeared from view, which is good. And then we put the fingerboard on. That gives us a ways up for clearance. And then what I'm most concerned with is when I put this on, you can you see there, this disappears. But I got some grinding to do here and some sanding. And I'll work this up where the thumb screws will drop this down. Notice that my tail piece is down even with this. So the strings will come up and across. So I like this the way this is looking. Okay, guys, there's a couple of things I want to catch you up on here. I have glued the fingerboard. Um, to the neck and we'll take these clamps off here Let me show you what that looks like as soon as I get this clamp hung up where it's not going to fall off um, we'll take the box off but um, I've got a little bit of work to do where uh, the fingerboard bleeds over I've got a I'm going to do that on the belt sander, um, and then I'm going to fret the neck, and what else do I have going on here? Okay, for the headstock, I've got my whole pattern laid out. It's going to be a four string. I've got this handy dandy um, template that I got from Darren Dukes. Um, been a handy tool for me, but... It's going to be a four string, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up uh, touching up the neck. My knot's going to go here. It's going to be a bone knot, um, but what I've done here is, let me get this laid out where we can see it. I think you can see it there. Let me pull around to the camera here quick. Uh, yeah, so I've got, um, these are cigar bands, and they say Republic of Cuba. Uh, 1958 which is the year of the Cuban uh, rebellion or whatever it was anyway I've put all these together and I've scanned them uh, um, like I do in the uh, the graphics episode and so I have put them down scanned them and then when I print this out on cardstock what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna lay these right up to the nut here and I think that you can see when I cut this out what it's going to look like. But I'm going to have a nice pattern of these and I think it's going to go along with the, the theme pretty well. Again, this is going to be a vintage looking pretty simple guitar. Anyway, let me get this ground. I'll try to get a shot of how I work uh, uh, the fingerboard down on the belt sander and do some final stuff. Here I'm also going to put a um, a nickel in this area so there's some detail work to do and I'll catch up once that's all done all right let's do a little fretting first thing I want to do is Get the end, cut it at an angle like that. Nothing like a good set of fret pliers. I went for so long without a set. I was just killing myself. Anyway, I did an episode um, on fretting. And it's really pretty easy um, once you get the hang of it again. The pliers are really the big issue in keeping everything supported and not get frustrated. march right down the neck.
right, that literally took me five minutes. Now, there's a lot of leveling work to do and stuff, and I won't bore you with that, but there we go. Okay, let me show you something here. It's getting time um, to strengthen up this box a little bit, make sure everything sits right. This box is going to be neck heavy. It's going to want a neck dive. And I really don't want to be depending on a couple of screws going through the top of the stem box. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to want to put this inside the box here. And I'm working myself into a corner here because pretty soon I'm not going to be able to take the neck back out. So I want to think this out really well. Uh, one of the things I'm concerned about is, is if I, let me get this out of here. It's going to be like a jigsaw puzzle now. When I take this neck out here, again, I want to be careful because I've told you from the very beginning here that this part of the box can break off easily. So before I start gluing anything in here, I'm going to take a piece of cardstock, like so, and I want to measure it out to where it fits down in here. And the reason I'm going to do that, see, is I'm going to glue this in here with some white glue, like so. And then um, if I use white glue, I don't have to worry about some, some types of glue. I won't mention any names, but they tend to expand or they turn a color. And I really don't want this old wood absorbing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a glue that I can trust. It's a white glue. Maybe not the best um, glue for wood and, and strength like that. But I'm just going to take some of this here and put it on like so and smear it around and then I'm going to put it in the bottom of the box here and what that will do is it will kind of act like a shield it's going to give me a little bit of a shim too because I'm just a tad wobbly on the bottom of that piece of neck wood I'm going to put in here anyway I'm going to glue that down like this Okay, let me show you what I've done. I've actually put two pieces of paper in here because everything, now that I've put this piece of neck board underneath here to shim this up, you see where I do that line there? This fits under here nice and snug. I'm going to end up gluing this in. I could also put a screw in from underneath here, but again, I really don't want to have a round-headed screw sticking out because it'll end up cracking this or whatever. I think I'd rather glue it and know that everything is tight when I'm done. I'm still going to be able to unstring it and take the top off in case I need to service where my uh, jack is going to come through or my volume control is going to be right here um, by just simply, again, taking the box corner off and the screw that's going to go under here or right through there to tie on to a block that I'm going to put right here. See, I'll be able to drill through there, put my pin and jack through there, make my wiring here, and my volume control will be right here. Again, this box isn't very big. I'm going to have a pickup here, and we'll get to that in a minute. But I want you to notice that I've taken this block. I've drawn four lines here, one in each corner. Can you see that? And then this will sit down. I'm going to cut this off right here to be level with this so it gives the box something to screw onto. But now that I know where each of these blocks are going to go, I'm going to take some of this adhesive caulking. You know I like to caulk my boxes and go around everywhere where the line isn't because I'm going to glue this right here and I don't want caulking on that. So wherever those lines are, I'm going to come up to side and put glue everywhere else. 
I'm going to caulk the box because it will tighten up the box and make it less likely to fall apart. I swear by caulking the boxes, I don't think it does anything to change the sound. I mean, a box with holes in it that's falling apart, it doesn't have good sound. But anyway, I'm going to cut these off next and get these pegged in and I'll show you what all this looks like. Okay, I'm going to be careful here because they're not glued in, but I've cut those four uh, pillars in the post. You'll notice that they fit right there where the box can screw on. Still got that hole to cut right there or drill in right there. Slide this over, line it up. And when I put the screws in on the side of the box, ultimately what I'll have to do if I want to take the top of the box off and service everything is get this screw out of here. Everything else except the box top will be glued in place. But now is the time to glue these in place and then caulk everywhere except here and here. So, there you go. Okay guys, you saw Tammy signing it. I, um, before I lacquered this up, I really liked the way this turned out. Um, this is Tula Poplar. You can see uh, it looks vintage, it looks rustic, I like against this box, that, that cherry stain on those dowels really looks good too, but um, before I sprayed this was varnish, I used, um, I'm using these black closed gear tuners, those are going to look good. I drilled the holes there, um, and then while I've got this here, I'm using a 1929 nickel, buffalo head nickel, I drilled a hole through it so I can uh, screw it in here instead of just gluing it in there but anyway year of the depression um, it kind of goes with the box and everything let me turn this over now and again I took some cigar uh, wrapper bands and set them on some painters tape scanned it at high resolution um, and then made this cut it out it's just a little bit bigger than um, the neck I drilled out my holes I've, I'm going to use a piece of bone for the knot you can see that I've ground it down to where it needs to be and rounded off the side that's going towards the strings it's going to sit right there and the way this works again this is just a little bit bigger I put this like so mod podge this and I'm going to make a cut right here I want this nut to sit really flat so it doesn't have a weird angle it gets pressure and then the strings pop it loose or something anyway I'm going to put that nut on with this Gorilla Super Glue I like this stuff it holds it comes in a good quantity so it's pretty good value as well okay again I'm just catching you up before I seal this up um, a couple things to pay attention to here. This one has been kind of a challenge because you got to think ahead. You see this little grounding uh, point right here? Well, when you go when you go to put the neck inside the box, that sticks out. So instead of sticking, making a bigger hole here or something here to make that work, what I did was I just put it through, prepped it outside the box, put the first side through and then pop, propped it up like this and put it all together. Now that it's in there, I slide this through like so. And I'm going to put this, remember we shimmed this up with paper and lined the inside with paper. So once I slide this in here, there's no room to get it out. I'm going to put a tad bit of glue on the bottom side or the top of this bottom board. I don't, don't need to glue it really tight. Of course, I'm going to pull off this tape and stuff where I taped it off to do the varnish, but other things to think about was I put these, cut these blocks, you saw me do that, I'm about ready to glue these in, um, I measured each one individually so they're marked, I don't want them to stick up, but you want to remember we've got a jack, a pin jack, I like using these because they're heavy duty, I've got those, one of those coming in from this way, uh, but this wood is kind of brittle and thin so I took the pillar block for this one put it in here and now I'm going to slide that through like that then I'm going to glue it before I put this here let's get these out of the way before 
I put this finally in place, I'm going to put the wires on here, solder these, and then run them through the box so I don't have to worry about it before I glue this up. Again, I'm going to put all these posts in once everything is done and I don't have to take the box apart. I'm going to glue these down and take caulking and go everywhere where I didn't glue. Now, finally, on the top of the box, there's not much room here. I'm going to put a flat humbucker pickup right about here. I'm going to probably need to cut it, uh, the box out a square right there on the top. But there's not much room on this box. So what I did was I took a chicken head knob and put it on a smaller potentiometer than I usually use. This thing is going to have a volume only. Um, and put this here. Notice that I point, pointed all of the wires the connections going forward instead of backwards. I don't want to try and cram everything down in here. These things just keep jumping out at me. When will I ever learn? But I don't want everything wired up right in here and cramped. So I'm going to pull wires to here, loop them back over, uh, tie them up in a loom, and they'll connect right here by, by this being pointed forward. I put my studs in off of, you know how we pull them off of a uh, arch top bridge, pull those out, worked them in there, and then I used a nylon insert knots and I put a tad bit of Loctite there. I also put a tad bit of Loctite um, on the knot or the, or the washer and knot that hold on the potentiometer. These uh, chicken head knobs are pretty cool. You've got a very small Phillips you tie them and crank them down. They don't just press on. And notice that when I put this on, I arranged it to where it's kind of out of the way. It's tucked in the corner. But when I turn it, it doesn't stick it over the box where it could be dropped and knocked off and pulled off. But it just, in a way, that's about the best that I could see to get it out of the way. Um, now it's just doing some wiring getting the box corners on. Of course, I'm going to rough these up. I did a, an episode called Details Matter. I drilled the holes right there. Those holes are right over the pillars that, I, that I'm gluing in. So in order to take the box top off in the future, I just pulled these off. I'm going to put a couple of screws in on the sides there just kind of stabilize things but the box will be glued up the bottom of it will be fine if I ever have to do anything I just pull these off and I'm gonna rig the wire up enough where I've got enough slack where I could do this in case I ever have to work on something but that is about it I'm gonna put this together and show you uh, what it looks like when it's all done and maybe even fired up a little bit hey last thing almost forgot all of my grounding here, tape goes down here, of course, to that ground wire that's mounted off to the side. The strings will be ground here. But I've got this piece of corrugated metal that I found laying in an alley being run over uh, by a garbage truck. Looks like the wind blew the fence down. Got this off here off of a secret address in Los Angeles, the old part of Los Angeles. See you in a little bit when this is all wrapped up. All right, remember, we started off with a white owl box, an old one that looked like this one, and ended up with this. Let's look at the back first. I like the way that this box varnished out. I like the contrast on these pins here, uh, buffalo head nickel. This tulip poplar is really good wood. I like the way it turned out. Of course, Tammy's signature, we use these old black um, closed gear tuners. Let's get it turned around here. Yeah, I really like the way this turned out. Love that logo. Got a piece of galvanized metal. Box corners look good. Got the humbucker. The adjustable floating bridge. Nice zebra wood fingerboard, fretboard, and of course these cigar wrappers that I laid a bunch of them out and made the graphic. But I really like the way this turned out. So let's have a sound. Let's get a sound check on this thing.